This video is brought to you by Raycon True Wireless Earbuds. Stick around to hear more about them and also a special offer they're making available through my channel. In the past, the one or two weeks after the conclusion of E3 would serve as brief respite for the gaming journalists and commentators who had spent the previous week staying up until 4am typing up those 10 things you missed about some big game reveal articles. Nothing went on in those brief weeks, so we got to kick back, relax, chill out. Not so in 2021, where the week following E3 seems almost as jam-packed with news as E3 itself. Well, not quite obviously, but close enough. Shit happened this week, so let's get to it. Here comes This Week in Video Games. Like and subscribe. Speaking of E3, did you know that Forza Horizon 5 was voted the most anticipated game at this year's show? The voting wasn't open to players, but instead was just a panel of judges from publications like IGN, GameSpot, PC Gamer, GamesRadar, etc. I don't know about this one. I'm excited for Forza as well, but more excited than for Elden Ring, more excited than for Breath of the Wild 2, more excited than for the Xbox Series X fridge. I don't think so. Maybe it's Starfield that you're most excited about, unless of course you're a Sony fan, in which case Bethesda is sorry, sort of. This week, Bethesda's head of PR, Pete Hines, sat down with GameSpot, where he responded to a question about Bethesda going Xbox and PC exclusive. Here's what he said. If you're a big fan of stuff we make and a game that we're making is no longer available on your platform, I totally understand if you are unhappy or pissed or whatever. Like, I get it. Those are all real feelings and frustrations. Well, I'm a PlayStation 5 <laughs> player as well, and I've played games on that console, and there's games I'm going to continue to to play on it. Um, but, you know, if you want to play Starfield, PC and Xbox, sorry. I, yeah, you know, the, all I can really say is, is I apologize. No one was really happy with this, with Sony fans pointing out the holiness of the word since you can't take corporate apologies to the bank, and Xbox fans arguing that Bethesda shouldn't have to apologize for their games going exclusive since no one else seems to be apologizing. I agree with that. Insomniac didn't apologize when they got bought up by Sony making Spider-Man a PlayStation exclusive, so why should Bethesda? Can't believe I'm defending Bethesda right now. Look what these console wars have done to me. Anyway, Pete Hines would later go on to put out a tweet walking back or clarifying his words. He said, quote, I'm not apologizing for exclusivity. I don't have to do anything. Some of our fans are upset, angry, and I'm sorry they are. That isn't wrong or weird. It's acknowledging how they feel. That's it. That's my whole point. I'm not sure that was his whole point, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Bethesda games are going to Xbox and PC exclusively, and nothing's going to change that now. One person that's definitely not apologizing is Todd Howard. Speaking to the UK's Telegraph, Howard commented that there was a silver lining to Bethesda games not coming to PlayStation consoles. Quote, By focusing on those platforms, you really get to lean in on making the best it can be for those systems. It's really about focus. That's what I would say. It's nice to put the bar high, obviously, but it's really good to be to focus and say that this is what we're creating and here is the bar. A lot of people twisted these words to imply that Todd was happy that Bethesda games wouldn't be coming to PlayStation, but that's a pretty bad faith reading. He's just saying that developing for fewer hardware platforms is easier and his team can focus on maximizing performance on Xbox and PC. That makes sense. Jesus Christ, now I'm defending Todd Howard. What the hell is going on? Okay, final piece of Bethesda news. If you were hoping that Machine Games' new Indiana Jones game was coming anytime soon, then you're out of luck. In the same interview with GameSpot, Pete Hines told us that Indy was, quote, in the very, very, very early stages of development. Fair enough. While we're Microsoft adjacent, let's tick off some Xbox news. One thing you might have missed was the Halo Infinite multiplayer deep dive, which aired a few days after Microsoft's E3 press conference. Now, there's nothing particularly juicy in this. I just wanted to share it with you because I think it looks really fucking cool and it got me really pumped for the future of Halo. More so than any other video I'd seen to date on Halo Infinite, this was the one that made me go, hell yes, this looks cool. It covers gameplay, game mods, weapons, customization, the seasonal model, the jump to free to play, and a whole bunch more. It's 12 minutes long and I really recommend checking it out. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. If you were wondering why Rare's upcoming Everwild didn't appear at E3, well, well, we now know why. Video Game Chronicle reported this week that they've confirmed from multiple sources that Everwild has been completely rebooted after the departure of the creative director last year. This has led to a complete reshuffling of the senior leadership and essentially going back to square one on the title. This doesn't surprise me, because when the game was revealed, Rare were really open about the fact that they didn't even know what it was, telling the press that they were just gonna kind of figure it out as they go. Not a great approach to game dev. With the rebooting, Everwild is now aiming for a 2024 release, which sources say is ambitious, so expect it in 2025 or later, 
if ever. Okay, here's a great story that I think is getting really underreported. As part of a recent post E3 blog, Microsoft talked about their plans for the future of Xbox, and one of the things they mentioned was that xCloud was coming to Xbox One. xCloud is Microsoft's cloud streaming solution, allowing you to play games through the cloud on a variety of devices. It's currently using Xbox One hardware in the cloud, but will soon be upgraded to Xbox Series X hardware. What this means is that if you have good enough internet and you aren't playing games that require split second timing, then you can just keep using your Xbox One forever. You can play Xbox Series X games with your Xbox One through your $15 a month Game Pass Ultimate subscription that also includes xCloud. That's pretty damn good. God bless you, Uncle Phil. So how about some Sony news? PlayStation fans rejoice. Cyberpunk is returning to the PSN. The news leaked early on social media before CD Projekt Red confirmed the news in a statement. Sony also put out their own statement saying that yes, the game is returning to the PSN, but no, the game is not fixed. Sony spokesperson said, quote, users will continue to experience performance issues with the PS4 edition, while CD Projekt Red continues to improve stability across all platforms. SIE recommends playing the title on PS4 Pro or PS5 for the best experience. Ouch. Every few weeks we seem to get new leaks or news about Sony's upcoming PSVR 2 headset, and this week was no exception. Bloomberg report that Sony are aiming for a holiday 2022 release for the headset, and that it will use OLED panels manufactured by Sony. That's literally all we got this week, but hey, it's better than nothing. If you're wondering where all the Nintendo news is, we got a little bit. Turns out the Bayonetta 3 director is kind of pissed off. With the game absent from Nintendo's E3 Direct, many fans began spouting wild, baseless theories about the game being in trouble or delayed or cancelled. Game director Hideki Kamiya wasn't having it, calling these sorts of comments and speculation nothing but annoying public waste. In particular, he responded to tweets suggesting that development had stopped, calling those spreading the rumours Kuso Baka, which I'm told roughly translates to fucking idiots. I really like this guy. Anyway, apparently development is progressing just fine and dandy, and you'll hear more about it when they're ready to talk about it. That's it. Exciting leaks this week from the Epic Game Store. Their back end received an update, which data miners seized on with great gusto. The outputs of their labors, two big games coming to PC that, if it's true, is going to make people really happy. The first is a remaster of Alan Wake, something a lot of people have been calling for given the cult status of the title. The second was Final Fantasy VII Remake, a game we knew was coming to other platforms eventually, but Sony seems to be paying top dollar to stretch that exclusive period as long as possible. Square just released the PS5 edition of Seven Remake along with Episode Yuffie DLC, so making the jump to PC at this time wouldn't feel like the wrong timeline. Availability on Xbox though, that's another story entirely. And finally, FromSoft fans, we got some news this week about Elden Ring, sort of. Game of Thrones author George R. R. Martin was interviewed this week and one of the questions touched on Elden Ring. Here's what he had to say about his involvement in the title. I've, I've played some video games. I'm not a big video gamer. This was big news, by the way, because, I mean, you know, George looks like a gamer. My work on it was actually done years ago. Um, they, these games, they're like movies. They take a long time to develop. But the game has been very slowly developing, and now it's, it's coming out in January, I believe. So I'll be as excited as anybody else to, uh, to see it. I really, really hope George streams his first playthrough of Elden Ring. If Bernie Sanders can figure out how to get Twitch working, then surely George can too. So what got announced or delayed this week? Well, where Ubisoft failed us, Symbiosis Games hopes to deliver. Meet Spectre, a totally not split Splinter Cell game, if Ubisoft's lawyers are asking, but totally a Splinter Cell game, if anyone else is asking. It's a competitive multiplayer game that looks to revive the classic Spies vs Mercs game mode of old, and while we've not really seen anything except for a reveal trailer, it's more Splinter Cell than Ubisoft have given us, so we'll take what we can get. No release date for this one yet. Boomerang X got a release date. It's arriving July 8th for PC and Switch. I previewed this one a few months back and my put this on your radar segment. I played a preview build of it and I had a blast. It's weird. I can't really describe it except to say it's kind of like Unreal Tournament with a boomerang and single player only and a really weird art style and I was a fan. Big surprise with this next one, in the chaos of E3 you might have missed that Elix 2 was announced. This came as a shock to more than a few people, myself included, since the previous game got very mixed reviews and overall reception when it released back in 2017. Still, it's one of those games that certain people really, really love. They'll recognize its flaws and they'll be like, yep, we know all that, but we love it anyway. Plenty of people happy to see this one. Congrats to the developer for making it happen. No release date on this one yet either. Splitgate is a novel first person shooter that combines the feel and pace of Halo with the portal mechanics of, well, portal. 
I played this back at launch and I thought it was clever, but the gunplay really sucked. I haven't touched it since then, so I don't know how it's changed over the last year. Either way, you can try it for yourself on console now, since it just got a PlayStation and Xbox release date of July 27. It's free to play, so knock yourself out. A Plague's Tale Innocence is getting a sequel. That was revealed at E3, but since then, we've also learned that the original game is getting a next-gen update. It arrives for both Xbox Series consoles and PS5 on July 6th, and delivers 4K, 60fps, and 3D audio support. This is a brilliant game, and if you haven't yet experienced it, this is a perfect excuse. Another sneaky PS5 release is The Medium. The once Xbox and PC exclusive will make its way to Sony's next-gen console on September 3rd. I like this game, but a lot of people didn't. It definitely met a mixed reception. I'll leave a link to my review in the description below. Finally, here's a weird one. Niantic, makers of Pokemon Go, have announced that they're working on another augmented reality game, only this time it's based on the Transformers. Transformers Heavy Metal will involve you walking around with your phone, pointing it at things, and then having battles with Transformers and Autobots and Decepticons out in the wild. I could really see how this formula works for Pokemon and for Pikmin as well, which is the other game Niantic are working on. Transformers though, I don't know about that one. So what came out last week? Well, Among Us came to Xbox. It's Among Us on Xbox. What else do you want me to say? Strange Brigade arrived on the Switch. It's sort of like third person left for dead, but it's not great. No Switch reviews seem to be up for this one yet, but the PC version is what I played. It sits at mid to high 60s on Metacritic for both critic and user score. That sounds about right to me. Red Solstice Survivor 2 made its way to PC this week. It's a tactics-based RPG that looks like a cross between XCOM and a twin-stick shooter. It's sitting at 70% mostly positive on Steam. And finally, roguelike deck builder Rogue Book made its way to Steam. There are plenty of these around these days, but this one certainly seems to be the most colorful of them. It's currently sitting at 70% positive on Steam, so it clearly hasn't supplanted any of the staples of the genre. So what's coming out this week? Well, kicking things off is Dungeons & Dragons Dark Alliance arriving on consoles, PC, and as a day one Game Pass release. I reviewed this last night. It's horrifically bad. It's 10 bads out of 10. I'm not the only one that thinks so, by the way. This game currently sits the low 60s on Metacritic with only two positive reviews. PC Gamer scored it at 82. I have no idea how, while PC Invasion scored it 35. That feels about right to me. Just for reference, IGN scored it a 4, and you know anytime they score anything less than a 7, it's gotta be a total disaster. Please don't waste your time on this. I'll leave a link to my review in the description below. Ender Lily's Quietus of the Nights arrives today on both PC and Switch. This has been an early access for some time where it sat at 95% positive on Steam. It's a beautiful looking 2D action RPG with Metroidvania elements. I think this looks superb and I can't wait to check it out this week. Isometric puzzle builder Lego Builder's Journey arrives today on Switch and PC. I really like the art style for this. Hopefully the puzzles hold up as well. The Olympics are on soon and we're going to get a new Olympics game that releases today for all platforms. Perhaps the most exciting release du jour is the Pirates Life update for Sea of Thieves. This was shown off at E3 during Xbox's press conference and there was a gameplay deep dive a few days after that. This looks fantastic to the point where I've actually reinstalled Sea of Thieves for the first time since its disappointing launch. I hear this game has changed a lot since then and I'm really looking forward to just diving back in and figuring out how things work and you know just sinking some pirate ships with Johnny Depp, or at least the guy that sounds like him. Alex Kidd and Miracle World DX arrives on all platforms on the 24th. Mario Golf Super Rush arrives on the Nintendo Switch on the 25th, as does Tony Hawk 1 and 2 Remaster, which feels like a really great fit for the Switch. Love that they ported that over. The other big hitter for the week is Scarlet Nexus, the real-time action JRPG releasing on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC on the 25th. I did actually play a few hours of this at a preview event, and I actually quite like the combat and the visual design. I just really struggled with the storytelling stuff since it's very anime and it's usually just still so it kind of felt more like a visual novel at times. Either way you can check it out for yourself later this week. Put this on your radar.
Okay, so this week's Put This On Your Radar is a little different. Today is the last day of the Steam Next Festival. It's an event with over 700 playable demos for upcoming titles, most of them indie. There's lots of fantastic stuff here like Sable, and They Always Run, and Death Trash, and Gloomwood, and tons and tons more. It's the last day of the festival today, so go and download as many demos as you can. Also, just start hunting around for Reddit threads and Twitter threads and forum posts or whatever, going through recommendations of the best stuff. I'll leave a link to one of those below. This is honestly the single best game discovery platform in existence at the moment. E3 has got nothing on the ability to actually play 700 real games. I love this stuff, so check it out and find yourself something great. Sort of free stuff time and we've got a few things to catch up on. First up, the Epic Game Store. We've got Hell is Other Demons and Overcooked 2 available until the 25th, with Overcooked 2 being particularly delightful, so be sure to grab that. On the 25th, things tick over to Horizon Chase Turbo, which is a modern take on the classic OutRun games. It's sitting at 95% positive on Steam right now, so that's very encouraging. We also get Sonic Mania, a game that says, yes, 3D Sonic games generally suck, so let's stick with what works. It's retro-inspired Sonic and his pals are their absolute best. Here's hoping Sega figure out how to bring this franchise forward into the modern era somehow, someday. Xbox got a bunch of news relating to Game Pass coming out of E3. First up, a whole bunch of Bethesda titles were dumped on Game Pass that weren't there before. Stuff like Dishonored, Death of the Outsider, Ark Fatalis, and the original Fallout 1 and 2. We also got one of last year's highest rated games, Yakuza Like a Dragon, meaning that every single mainline Yakuza game is now available on Game Pass. Hopefully Judgment joins soon as well. There were some big announcements at E3 about future Game Pass releases. First up, the Left 4 Dead spiritual success of Back for Blood is coming to Game Pass as a day one release. That'll be on October 10th. RoboQuest is a promising loot-based first-person shooter with strong Borderlands vibes. It arrives at some point later this year and will be on Game Pass day one, no specific date yet. Finally, Lemnus Gate is an interesting looking turn-based first-person shooter. Sounds weird, but also sounds pretty cool. It's got plenty of positive buzz and it's confirmed to be a day one Game Pass title when it arrives on August 3rd. Finally, this is the last week you'll be able to grab Don't Nod's Tell Me Why for 100% free on both Microsoft Store and Steam. This is in celebration of Pride Month. I thought it was just part of the games, like a few of the chapters are free, but no, the whole thing is being given away for free, no strings attached. Not a bad deal at all. Our feel-good story for the week was originally a feel-good story, but in the last few hours it seems to have become a feel-bad story. Probably. Yes, I'm talking of course about the Blue Box Conspiracy, an absolutely wild ride that began some months back with the reveal of a new PlayStation exclusive called Abandon from startup developer Blue Box. People immediately hypothesized that this was in fact Hideo Kojima who created a fake company and a fake game trailer to eventually reveal that he was working on a new Silent Hill game. This theory died down after that, but it had a huge resurgence this week when Blue Box tweeted out a hint that their game was actually named something starting with the letter S and ending with the letter L. So, you know, Silent Hill, I guess. Uh, they eventually went on to delete and apologize for that, clarifying that they have nothing to do with either Silent Hill or Kojima, but conspiracy theorists weren't buying it, with people pulling at every possible hint that they could to keep the dream alive. It all came crashing down today though as Jason Schreier of Bloomberg personally interviewed the leader of the studio, establishing that he was in fact a real person. And the same guy also posted this video to Twitter. Yeah, I'm not really associated with um, Hideo Kojima. Did you hear that? He says he's not really associated with Hideo Kojima, which means that he could be a little bit associated, right? Plus, do you really believe that this guy is a game dev? Does he look like a game dev to you? This guy is a game dev. This guy is a game dev. This guy is a game dev. This guy just looks too damn handsome. I call shenanigans on this one. Good try, Kojima, but we're on to you. And that, ladies and gentlemen, has been the week in video games. Thank you all for stopping by. If you enjoyed yourself, be sure to drop a like on the video and hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to ding the notification bell so you'll never miss a video. We'll be back same time next week to crunch through some gaming news. Thank you again. And a big thanks to Raycon for sponsoring the video. Wireless earbuds. You look around and you see these things on sale for what? Like 200 bucks? 300 bucks? That's crazy. You don't need to spend that amount of money on wireless earbuds in 2021 because Raycon has got you covered. I've been using Raycons for like 18 months now, maybe more, and I was skeptical at first because they're literally half the price of other earbuds and I was like, well, they must be terrible, but no, the quality is just as good or better than other earbuds I'd use and the battery life was awesome as well. Raycon's newest 
newest model, the Everyday E25 earbuds, are their best ones yet, with six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design that gives you a nice noise isolating fit. See, the thing is, wireless earbuds are the sort of thing that just slot into your life and you always have them with you wherever you go, like wallet, keys, phone, earbuds, catching the bus, hitting the gym, studying in the library. Libraries still exist, right? That's, that's still a thing. Point is, Raycons are going to be there for you no matter what you're doing. Best of all, Raycons come with a 45-day return policy, so you don't have to take my word for it. You can try them for yourself, and if you aren't happy, you just get your money back easy. To get 15% off your order, click the link in the description below or visit buyraycon.com forward slash skill up. Thanks Raycon for sponsoring the video and thank you for watching it. Thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down so I know to do better for next time. If you enjoyed yourself, consider subscribing. And if you really enjoyed yourself, maybe consider hitting that notification bell so you never miss a video. You can see my patrons here on the left. They're awesome. They're amazing. If you want to join them, check out my Patreon page. Thank you again. I'll see you next time.